Good morning. Let us again look into the Word of God, First John chapter 1. Uh, we want to begin today from verse 5. As we begin, let us pray and ask God to lead us. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for this time that we can share your Word together. Thank you for the Spirit of Truth. I pray, O oh God, that you would lead us and guide us into your truth, cause us to understand it, and cause our lives to to be made better for it, cause us to make the necessary application in our lives. We ask you to take this time and bless us, we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, Philip Brooks writes this, these inspiring words concerning light. He says, when the sun arose this morning, it found the world in darkness torpid and heavy and asleep, with powers all wrapped in sluggishness, with life that was hardly better or more than alive than death. The sun found this great sleeping world and awoke it. It bade it to be itself. It quickened every slow and sluggish faculty. It called to the dull streams and said, be quick. To the dull birds and bid them sing. To the dull fields and bid them, and bid them grow to dull men and bid them think and talk and work. It flashed electric invitations to the whole mass of sleeping power, which really was the world, and summoned it into action. It did not make the world it did not start another set of processes unlike those which had been sluggishly moving in the darkness. It poured strength into the essential processes and belo which belong to the very nature of earth. It glorified, intensified, fulfilled the earth. My friend, that happens every morning. That is what God does. God is light. And God intensifies, fulfills, and glorifies our humanity. God is indeed light. And so John tells us that the key to fellowship with God, if we are going to walk in the light, if we are going to have a personal, intimate relationship with God, John says that there are certain basic requirements. There are certain basic requirements. And so John tells us that fellowshipping in the light is number one. It is having an intimate, uh, an intimate, intimate relationship with God depends upon number one. It depends upon having a knowledge of the basic word of God, the word of God as revealed in scripture. So as the text says, John says, this is the message which we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have not sinned, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Verse 9, but if we confess our sins, or if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him to be a liar and his word is not in us. So John says, I want you to have an intimate relationship with God. I want you to enjoy daily close fellowship with your heavenly father. But in order to have this kind of fellowship, you must come to God on his terms. And so to have fellowship with God, to walk, the, to walk in an intimate relationship with God, number one, 
our fellowship with God is grounded on the revelation of the word of God. It is grounded on the revelation of God, the word of God, the gospel, the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. That message is the revelation of the Lord himself. John says that word was given to us by God himself through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is a revelation of the Lord himself. Secondly, we saw that it is a testimony of the eyewitnesses. It's a testimony of those who walked with Jesus, of those who talked with him, of those who encountered him, those who had a vital, intimate relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And John says to his writers, I am writing this to you. I am declaring this word to you so that you may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Lord Jesus Christ and with, is with God the Father. So the proclaimed word does three things for us. The proclaimed word produces joyous fellowship among us, the people of God. The word of God produces joyous fellowship with God the Father. The word of God produces joyous fellowship with God the Son. So, an intimate relationship with God is first of all grounded on the revelation of the word of God. Secondly, we saw. An intimate relationship with God, fellowship with God, is grounded on the revelation of the nature of God. It is grounded on God's revealing of himself to us. In other words, in order to walk with God, in order to walk close to God, in order to have a vital, intimate relationship with God, you and I have to, have to understand who God is. We have to understand God's nature. We've got to understand God's character. And John says concerning God's nature, he says this. This is the message, verse 5 of chapter 1. This is the message that you heard from him. And we announce to you that God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. God is light. So John is telling us something about God's nature. First, he states it positively. He says, God is light. And just to make sure that you understand what he's saying, just to reinforce the force that God is, the, soul, the, the word that God is light, John says, he states it negatively. He says, in God, there is no darkness at all. There is not one speck of darkness in God. There is not one speck of ungodliness in God. God is completely and perfectly light. We mentioned last week that this is one of three statements that John, the, the, the writer of First John, the Apostle John, he gives those three important statements concerning the nature of God. In his gospel, John's gospel, chapter 4 and verse 34, 24, he says, God is spirit. And then in the epistle, chapter 4 and verse 8, and then chapter and 4 and verse 16, he says, God is love. And now here in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5, he says, God is light. And in God, there is no darkness at all. So we were trying to understand what does it mean, what does this thought mean that God is light? What does John help us to understand when he tells us that God's nature is that of light? Well, physically, light represents God's glory. Intellectually, light represents God's truth. And morally, light represents God's holiness. Scripture tells us that God dwells in splendor. He dwells in glory and the brilliance of light. Where God is, there is splendor, there is glory, there is the brilliant of light that shines out of his being. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 16, talks about the glory of God's light. He says, God alone is immortal, who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen, nor can see. To him be glory and might forever and ever. Amen. You see, God is light. 
all through the scriptures, it gives us the understanding of what it means that God is light. God light emanates from God's being. In fact, where God is, there is not even need for the sun. When God's glory is present, there is no need for any further light because God's present but, um, gives us the most brilliant imaginable light, so bright, so brilliant and glorious that it would even consume humans. In Revelation chapter 21 and verse 23, it tells us that the city, the new Jerusalem, will not need any light because the glory and the presence of God is there. So we began to see that when scripture talks about the fact that God is light, scripture reveals two foundational principles that flow from the thought that God is light. First of all, light represents the truth of God as embodied in the word of God. So it seems that truth has the same connotation as light. In other words, God is light means that God is the source and the measure of all truth. There is no duplicity in God. God is truth. The word of God is truth because it comes from the God of truth. Secondly, Scripture links uh, the fact that God is light with uh, our moral uh, conduct. It links it with virtue and moral conduct. So that we saw in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8 and 9, the Apostle Paul says this. He says, you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And then he says this, for the fruit of light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So when we talk about God being light, we are talking about his goodness. We are talking about his righteousness. We are talking about his truth. We are talking about God's holiness. So John begins writing to his readers, writing to his audience, and he says, God in light, God is light. Light refers to the source of knowledge. It refers to illumination. It refers to guidance. It points to God's glory. God is, God's glory shines forth from him. What we understand as the Shekinah glory of God, he is in unapproachable infinite, unchangeable, and he is the omnipresent God. So we can look at it as the revelation of God. We can look at it as the truth of God. We can look at it as the glory of God. But when John says in this context that God is light, he's mainly referring, he's mainly referring to God's moral attributes, the fact that God is holy. You see, as we look at the context, he talks about sin. He talks about not sinning. He talks about walking in light. He talks about keeping from unrighteousness because he's saying to us that God is a holy God. In John chapter 3 and verse 19, the gospel of John says this. And in him there is no darkness at all. It is a moral connotation that Jesus talks about. Jesus says, there is, I am the light of the world. It is he who has come to reveal the light of God to us. In John chapter 3 and verse 19, John says this. This is a judgment. That light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light. For their deeds are evil. So John is referring to the absolute moral purity of God. This is the message. This is a message that comes from God. God is light. God is completely, unreservedly, unabsolutely. God is unreservedly, absolutely holy with no mixture of sin, no faint of iniquity, no hint of injustice. God is light and God is completely light. Light is the opposite of darkness. In scripture, my friends, darkness stands for sin. It stands for evil. 
It stands for death. It stands for ungodliness. It stands for unrighteousness. All that is completely against the character and the nature of God. For God is holy and God is good and God is righteous. There is no trace of ungodliness or unrighteousness with God. So we talked about the holiness of God. Over and over again in the word of God, we encounter the holiness of God, the infinite purity of God's character, the infinite glory of God's perfection. Holiness is everything that God is. So the, the prophet Isaiah says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Everything that is associated with God is said to be holy. God's promises are holy. God's, all of God's attributes are covered with a sheet. With all of God's attributes are covered with a film of the holiness of God. So that God is holy love. God is holy justice. God has holy mercy. God's grace is holy. God's goodness is holy. He is a holy and a righteous God. Just as light reveals and purifies, so by his very nature, God illuminates and purifies those who come to him. His nature, the nature of God, sets the conditions for fellowship with God. It sets the foundation for a life of intimacy with God. John says, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. You see, it's easy for us to understand this, but back then, think of the pagans that John was writing to. Think of the, the culture, the Roman culture. Think of the Greek culture. Think of the mythologies that we read about today. This writer, George G. Findlay, talks about um, the, the mythology of Roman and Greek gods. He says, they had gods that could cheat and lie Gods who were licentious and unchaste. Gods that were spiteful and malignant towards men. Gods who were quarrelsome and abusive toward others. They had been accustomed to think of the Godhead as a mixed, as a mixed nature like their own, only on a larger scale. They thought that good and evil, kind and cruel, pure and wanton, made of darkness and light. But John is saying God is light and in God there is no darkness at all. There is not a trace of unholiness with God. You see, for John, light and darkness represented two separate and distinct moral realms in opposition to each other. God and his kingdom constitute the first realm, the realm of light. Satan and his followers constitute the realm of darkness. You see, God is holy. Because God is holy, God hates sin. God loves everything. God loves everything which is in conformity to his righteous laws. God loves everything that is in conformity to his holiness and to his goodness. And God hates or God loves everything which is contrary to his nature. God's word clearly declares that God hates sin, that God hates immorality, that God hates the darkness. There in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 30, 32, it says this, The fraud is an, an abomination to the Lord. Again, in Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 26, it says this, The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to God. In scripture, it says God is the holy one. He is the holy and righteous one. Holiness talks about the absolute purity of God. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. There is not a tint, there is not a trace of any darkness in God. Have you ever noticed that when you walk into a jewelry store, that the diamonds are often displayed on black velvet. Why? 
They are positioned there so that their brilliance stands out in contrast to the darkness. God's light is so bright that there is no darkness within him at all. God is light. And so John is saying, I want you to have fellowship with God. I want you to enjoy an intimate relationship with God. But if you're going to enjoy that closeness to God, you are going to have to live your life in accordance to the revealed nature of God. God is holy. God is righteous. And so those who want to enjoy Fellowship with God must live a life that is pleasing to God, must live a life that is compatible with the nature of God, which is God is holy. God is righteous. So my friends, the message is saying to us today, you are the people of God. Because you are the people of God, you are the holy one. God calls us saints. God calls us the holy ones because we belong to him. Everything that is associated with God is holy. And God is saying to us, in order to enjoy an intimate fellowship with him, in order to walk with him, in order to talk with him, in order to feel his presence, in order to benefit from the glory of his grace, we God says we must walk with him, we must seek him, we must abandon a life of sin, and we must seek godliness and righteousness and holiness. So we have seen that intimacy with God, fellowshipping with God, is based on number one, biblical understanding of God's revealed word. Number two, a biblical understanding of God's revealed character. And God's character, John, it's amazing. John does not begin telling us that God is love or that God is merciful or that God is filled with patience. No, John says, I want you to enjoy fellowship with God. But if you're going to enjoy fellowship with God, you must understand that this God that you are seeking to be close to, that you are seeking to walk with, is a holy and a righteous God and it is important for us the people of God to live a holy and a righteous God before or in the presence of our holy father so then John says in order to enjoy the fellowship with God in order to enjoy biblical fellowship with God biblical intimacy with God secondly John says there are some barriers that we must avoid there are some barriers that we must avoid. And he mentions a couple of these. So number two, I want us to see the biblical barriers to a life of intimacy, to fellowship with God. The biblical barriers to fellowship with God. So in just five, verse 5, John sets the tone. He sets the foundation. And then he says, beginning at verse 6, he says, if we see that we are walking with him and then living in darkness... We are not practicing the truth. Here's what verse 6 says. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we are having fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So here are the barriers and we will just start off with one today. The barriers, the hindrances to intimacy with God. Number one, the denial of the seriousness of sin. The denial of the seriousness of sin. So John says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, he says we are lying and we are not practicing the truth. So how can someone say, I am having fellowship with God. I am having this intimate walk with God. And yet, I am living in darkness. My life is characterized by the practice of sinfulness. John says that is a contradiction. It is a contradiction. He says to walk in the light. We are to live in conformity to the revealed will of God. Fellowship with God is dependent upon 
our walk with God. Our walk with God is dependent upon our understanding that God is a holy God. And we move our lives toward the holiness of God. To have intimacy with God, we need to walk with God. So John pronounces, he says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we will have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us from all sin. He says, if we say that we are walking with God and yet living in darkness, he says two things. Number one, we make God to be a liar. We say, no, God is not true. We make him to be a liar. Secondly, the negative fact is that the word of God is not in us. Fellowship with God. My friend, one of the blessed privileges we have as new creatures in Christ is that of having fellowship with God. Is that of having an intimacy with God. Is that of walking with God. So, John says, when you came to Christ, when you gave your life to Jesus, one of the most wonderful things that you have going for you is the opportunity to have fellowship with God. You understand when God created Adam and Eve in the garden, Genesis, book of Genesis tells us that in the cool of the day, God would come in the garden and he would have fellowship with them. He would walk with them. His presence was among them. That's what, is a, that's what we call real intimacy, closeness, a life of fellowship with God. But then one day sin entered into the world. They did, they disobeyed God. And when God came to them, instead of coming to him, they ran and they hid. Why? Because sin has come into the world. My friend, the biggest barrier to a life of intimacy with God is sin. And so they were driven out of that garden. Sin entered the world and we were alienated from God. And it is sin that alienates us from God. It is sin that keeps us from having, enjoying that closeness, that intimacy with God. And John says, if you are going to enjoy that closeness with God, if you're going to sense his presence, his power in your life, John says, we must take care of the problem of sin. So God, verse 5 Corinthians says this about our fellowship with God. It says this, God is faithful through whom you were called into fellowship with his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I were called into fellowship with God through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop a minute and think of that word fellowship. What does it mean? Fellowship means partnership. It means sharing in common or in communion. You see, the essence of fellowship with God is agreement or unity of purpose. We agree with him. We agree with his word. We agree with his standards. And John is going to talk about sin and he's going to say, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Why is confession so important? Because literally, my friend, the word confess is the word homologeo. The first part of the words means same. Homo means same. And logeo comes from the word lego to say. So when we confess our sins, we basically, what is what, that is what, here's what we are doing. We are saying the same things about our sin that God says. And God says about our sin that it stinks. God says about our sin that it separates us. God says about our sin that it prevents us from having that intimacy with God. And we must come and we must confess and we must agree with God concerning our sin. So one of the barriers to a life of intimacy with God is not taking sin seriously. John is saying, how can you be saying that you are having fellowship with God and yet continuing to sin? Fellowship means, my friend, an act of intimate communion, sharing and participating in the activities of mutual interest and delight. I share mutually with what God likes. What God likes, I like. What God hates, I hate. God hates sin, I must hate sin. What God delights, I must also delight. That is the key to a life of fellowship with God. Think of it this way. The Bible tells us about the man Enoch. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God. 
Enoch was walking with God. What it is saying is that Enoch was close to God. Enoch sensed the presence of God. Enoch had a life that was deeply rooted in the character of God. Enoch was a man who was set apart. Enoch was a man who was close to God. He walked with God. He enjoyed that intimacy with God. And one day God took him to heaven. Somebody says this, Enoch was so accustomed to walking with God that one day God says, you know what, Enoch, you are closer to my house than to your house. Let's go. And Enoch was taken up to heaven. He was a man who had intimate relationship, intimate fellowship with God. The key to a life of intimacy with God, my friend, is that we must take, we must take, sin seriously this great author David Mac David McLeister says this as God took the dirt and made it into something bearing his own image so God takes us defiled and dirty with sin and he remakes us to he remakes us he restores us into that holy image once again in Christ that's why we are called saints we are called the people of God second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6 says this for it is the God it for it is God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are saying, my friends, when we enjoy fellowship with God, in order to enjoy fellowship with God, we must walk with him, we must seek him in faith, we must run away from sin, we must run away from unholiness and unrighteousness. John says, when sin is taken care of, then it, we make it possible, the floodgates are open, and we sense God's presence, we sense God's bounty, we sense God's power into our lives, but it's important that we take sin seriously John is other words in other words saying it is not possible to be living in dark living in darkness and still enjoying intimacy with God John says it's a contradiction John says it is something like saying this it is something like saying you spent the weekend relaxing in the shade of the Sahara Desert. That's a contradiction because the Sahara Desert does not have any shade. John says, how can you claim to be living close to God? How can you claim to be having an intimate fellowship with God and at the same time living a life dominated by sin? So John says, the key to a life of fellowship with God is to keep away from sin is to live a holy life you see such fellowship with God is at the heart of what it means to be a Christian what it really means to be a Christian is really to have a relationship with God is to have that closeness is to have that intimacy with God God says I have called you so that you can enjoy that intimacy with me that which Adam lost in the Garden of Eden God is restoring and the way God restores it is first of all he sent his son the Lord Jesus Christ to die on the cross to save us from our sins when we come to God in salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ the floodgates to a life of intimacy with God is open and John says you can enjoy that fellowship with God but in order to do so we must take care of a life of sin we must take care of ungodliness we must take care of unrighteousness so my friend as we look at first John as we dive into the text John says lays the foundation and John says God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we are walking with God, if we say that we are living in the light, we cannot at the same time live in, in darkness, live in a life of dominant sin. John says, God will not have it. You and I, and John is going to say later on in verse 9, 
God has made the provision for our sin after salvation. God says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then John skips over into chapter 2 and he continues with that thought of fellowship. He says in chapter 2 and verse 1, these things I have written unto you that you may not sin. John says, I don't want you to sin. I want you to live a life of holiness. And John says, but... He brings up the possibility of sin. He says, but if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And we'll explore into that next week. We'll talk about the other two barriers to a life of fellowship with God. And we will talk about that which God has provided so that we can maintain, we can sustain that fellowship with him. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for what he has made possible for us. Enjoying intimacy. Walking with Jesus. Walking with God. Enjoying closeness with him. We thank you and we praise you. Bless your word and bless your people. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.